very very good morning and happy morning to all of you we are going to be talking today about bouncing back long ago a friend of mine had uh, literally donated a hoard of rabbits to me he was a rabbit breeder and he had a lot of spare rabbits so he just came and dumped them on me one fine day one huge family of rabbits i had some spare space so i said okay they are very cute creatures and nice they don't make any demands on us they'll be just hanging around and we can observe them and feel happy when we want to we can ignore them when we don't want to we just have to feed them the basics and that's the end of it okay then what happened was that every few days we would find that one rabbit was dead and we would look to see whether something has happened no injury nothing to show that the that, uh, what could have uh, made this rabbit die was it something in the food if it was so then the others should have also died and they should have fallen sick nothing of the sort all of them are healthy and one uh, rabbit is dead then it happened the second time and the third time i got a little worried i had a friend who was a vet i called him up and i said this is what is happening shall i bring the uh, rabbits to you and will you examine and see if there's some you know unknown illness or something of that sort with uh, them he said no uh, do you have a window in the room in which those rabbits are i said yes uh, is that window accessible to any you know cats who roam around in your locality i said the window is accessible but no cat can come in because uh, the window has got uh, very strong bars on it so yes i know but the cat can come to the window and be visible to the rabbits i said yes he said i suspect that is what is happening every now and then the rabbits are scampering around very happy roaming around and eating or whatever and suddenly one cat comes on the window and snarls at them makes as if she is going to jump in from the window the nearest rabbit who is looking at the cat he doesn't know that the bars are so strong that the cat cannot come in but he has one look at the cat and the fact that the cat is making these horrible noises and is about to perhaps pounce on him and the cat i mean the rabbit has a heart attack and dies he says your rabbits are dying of heart attacks so what i did was that i closed that window and the rabbit stopped dying what's the moral of this uh, uh, story moral of the story was told much earlier uh, in the wonderful film shole which i keep quoting no gabbar singh says jo dar gaya so mar gaya fear i don't know how many of us are dying of fear how many of us are dying inwardly of uh, uh, fear i am not a doctor so please don't quote me that i said these things perhaps i don't have a right to say it but i am deeply concerned about people and that's why i'm saying it people who are mortally scared the moment the fever goes up to 99 the moment there is a slight cough the moment you are sitting to eat something and you say hey i'm not getting the taste of it finished half the battle is lost because of the fear and the second half of it is lost by our wonderful media pick up the newspaper in the morning those of you who still read newspapers headlines are hitting at you with numbers and all sorts of scandals and all sorts of pathetic stories about how somebody died in an ambulance somebody died in an auto rickshaw all these very very tragic stories all forms of media are doing that social media is doing much much worse 
so if you are on to any platforms of media your second thing has hit you these are the viruses and pandemics which are hitting much much worse than the actual biological virus so i have been focusing last few days on people who are bouncing back in fact right now in the chat box i see a few people you know who have bounced back who have had covid and who have recovered and they are here in our own group what about these people what about those who went through the same covid what do you call it covid 19 so and so strain and whatever and they are fit and fine why is it that nobody is talking about them why is it that we are not laying any emphasis on them okay how do we do that first thing is what i always keep emphasizing it is not enough to adapt to change you should anticipate change you should be ready that something new something unexpected something which you had not thought might happen to you can happen at any time the second thing to do is the wonderful proverb which says hope for the best and prepare for the worst so many simple ways to prepare far beyond the sms which people keep talking about that is sanitization and mask and social distancing those are absolutely compulsory but beyond that there are so many small small things i'm not going to go into those details now i've been sending those details to people who want anybody who's writing to me and asking what do i do to you know strengthen myself here you are what do i do if i feel that i have, may have already acquired covid what do i do if i have actually been tested positive for uh, covid what we need to do is to look beyond the negativity that is being spread all over the place so many people have used wonderful means of bouncing back from whatever they have been uh, through those who have had covid themselves those who have had to look after family members who had covid those who came to hear the news that somebody known to them has had covid in extreme cases you where you have come to know that somebody whom you knew or you cared for has died of covid that is inevitable whether you die of covid or whether you die out of fear death is inevitable the day we accept death as part of our life life becomes so much more easier it becomes so much more easier to bounce back in fact you don't even need to bounce back because you're already anticipated yes this is going to happen so what i can't expect life to be beautiful you remember that great tennis player i forget his uh, uh, name who had risen up to the top and had become the world champion and then he was struck down with aids and this was at a time when there was absolutely no cure for aids 90% 95% of the people who got aids were dying and when he came down with aids it was a death sentence unlike covid where 99% are recovering aids at that time was such that 90% of them were dying of aids and when people said aren't you feeling bad that you got aids don't you question why me out of billions of people in this world why should i have got covid hats off to that man he is no more but you know what he said he said yes there may be possibly a billion people who love to play sports hardly 5% of them get a chance i was one of those 5% i didn't say why me out of those who play 
95% just play for entertainment and this and that and it's done the 5% get into competitive uh, sports i was one of those 5% i didn't ask why me out of those who compete they play for their club or their locality or their college or whatever and they may win one or two cups or something and they stop there they don't go higher up only 5% go higher up i was one of those 5% and i did not ask why me out of maybe a thousand people who go into the higher level and competitive sports and state level and all that maybe a hundred people come anywhere close to the national level 50 100 whatever it is in a country i was one of them and i didn't ask why me out of all those who make a name at the national level a few go to the global and international level i was one of them and i did not ask why me finally the world championships are held four people come into semi finals i was one of the four i didn't ask why me out of that two come into the finals i was one of the two i didn't ask why me and finally one becomes the champion which was me and i did not ask why me so today if i have been selected to have aids i am not going to ask why me can we have that type of spirit it is not that uh, easy the slides it is not that easy but it is not impossible either we did a little bit of survey of how people bounced back Mira was the person who did the maximum work on that. The whole team, of course, put in their efforts. We reached out to as many people as we could through the social media. And we found out what ways and means have other people, ordinary people like you and me, what ways and means they have used to bounce back. And in that, we covered all ages. So if you see the first slide, we had this distribution of the ages of uh, people. The maximum number of people were in the 30 to 45 age group, which is the one which is now struggling to get the vaccination and they are not getting the uh, thing. And then, of course, there were elders beyond 45. There were also youngsters who were below 30 years of uh, uh, age. This was the profile then the gender inevitably as it usually um, happens more women responded to the uh, survey than uh, men almost 80 percent of those who uh, responded were uh, uh, women gender yes 80 percent of those who responded were uh, uh, women doesn't matter but we got you know, lucky that we even got 21 percent of the uh, men and then we asked people what are the ways and means that you used and we gave them a lot of choices we asked about prayer meditation a lot of us are spiritual people and we indulge in our own ways of prayer meditation whatever it is Almost half the population said that prayer and meditation helped them quite intensely. The rest of the half, 40 plus percent people said it did help them to some extent. About 10 percent people said no, it did not help. So they did not get into prayer and uh, uh, meditation. The second option that we gave them to reflect over was physical exercise. Did physical exercise help uh, uh, you? Here again, at least half the people said, yes, physical exercise helped me. So please remember how the mind and body are connected to each other. Half the respondents said, physical exercise helped me immensely. And another 45% said, it did help me moderately. Hardly 5% said it did not help. So it reinforces what I've always been saying that the mind and body are so closely connected to each other. 
you keep up your physical activity even if you are home bound you can't step out you can't go to gyms and sports uh, centers and all that you can do a lot of exercises at home please see that you continue with uh, uh, that then they ask them what about spending time with the family and here we got a much higher response more than 60% said spending time with the family helped immensely if you have not been giving sufficient importance or time or attention to your family please start doing it now 30% said that it helped moderately less than 8% said spending time with the family did not help uh, uh, me then we said what about talking it out need not be professional counseling or this or that but at least talking it out to known people or whoever you trust and here again more than 60% said that talking it out helped immensely and another 30% said it helped at least moderately very few said talking it out did not help and then comes something very amazing this is something i've been propagating always like they say the best way to learn something is to teach it to others which is hardly followed in our education system but how to help yourself one of the best ways is by helping others those who reached out to others hardly very few said it did not help at all from immensely to moderately if you see 95% people said that reaching out to others helping others made me feel better about myself and the way life is treating me that is what i want you to understand and then of course getting deep into work i could not resist the temptation of asking people that you know becoming a workaholic okay now that i am bound i can't go out i can't meet friends and all that let me get down to only work 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 surprisingly 45% said yes it helped immensely i do appreciate their candid response but i also want to question them whether that has only postponed the problem like how we said that the first wave whatever we did only postponed it it did not eliminate the virus getting deeply involved in work was it like getting drunk and feeling very nice with yourself this particular question i want people to reflect over because i saw i 45% saying it helped immensely another 40% Two percent saying it did help moderately. I appreciate the balanced twelve percent who are truthful enough to say that no, it did not uh, help because okay, I did more, more and more and more work. It kept me engaged, but overall, if I look at my mental health and all that, I don't think it has really uh, helped. These are the things that I want you to please reflect uh, uh, upon. The last. one obviously is what we do what we propagate and what we keep telling people that is getting into any form of counseling or therapy if you have identified that you have these anxieties and fears if you are able to understand that these things are affecting you in some way or the uh, other if it makes you feel uneasy please go for any form of counseling or therapy even though a huge chunk of uh, uh, people more than 30% said it did not help it was primarily because they did not reach out for counseling they did not understand its uh, uh, significance so while this pie chart doesn't look very 
encouraging. I want you to understand that it is those who did not really do it properly, did not finally you know, reach out to the proper people for counseling who did not benefit. But those who did benefit, let us learn a lesson from them. These are anyway the type of uh, things that we got from our uh, uh, survey. I'm sure you have so many other ways and means, but the primary thing is this question of uh, you know bouncing back. It started last year with one of our uh, uh, students who was one of the first in Bangalore City to be struck down. She, her husband, and a teenage son. At a time when nobody knew about COVID, it looked so horrifying. She was hospitalized. She was gasping for breath. Her uh, cough was so bad, she thought she is going to die. And yet, within days of bouncing back, she called up and she said, here I am, fit and fine. Can I be of some service? And when the lockdown lifted, when people were still getting scared to move around and you know, meet people or go to places, she walked in one day and she said, I am here in person. Have a look at me and tell anybody who wants to talk to me to find out what is COVID, I am willing to give it. So much so that when BBMP asked us to take over eight wards in Hebat constituency, where patients who are being hospitalized through BBMP in the designated hospitals, we were given their numbers and we were asked to connect to them, ask them how they are, and more than the patients, to connect with their family members to see how they are coping with it. And our team of more than 15, 20 counselors rose up to the occasion and they did a wonderful job and she was one of them. And we also have our uh, very wonderful uh, uh, counselor who has been part of the Banjara team for over 15 years, Kanmani, who at that time rose to the occasion and spoke to so many people and I think it must have been very beneficial for her when she came down with the COVID eventually and she could just breeze through it. And she recovered and she is back to normalcy. These are some of the things which are very, very neglected, I feel. People are not looking at that part of it. That there is so much good that is happening. You get stuck in a traffic jam. You are late for an appointment. You are angry, you are frustrated, you are irritated. You have to make amends for the fact that you reach late. You do all that. But finally, when you do get over it, you do rejoice, isn't it? You do rejoice. And that is what I want you to to please look at the positive aspect of whatever is happening and whatever is likely to happen. When I say, you know, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, there are two things which I want you to understand. One is that this lockdown may not end on 24th. It may extend much beyond that. Have you prepared for the worst? Are you making sure that you do the right things in order to be able to overcome? Or are you going to be taken aback and say, ah, it's been extended again one week, two weeks, four weeks, we are locked up, what is going to happen and things like that. Looking at life holistically, looking at every aspect of whatever is uh, happening uh, uh, around uh, uh, you. The second thing is that they are already talking about the third wave. So the lockdown may be lifted. We all say hi to everyone and we start moving around and the wonderful traffic jams of cities like Bangalore again come back in full force 
and you again start cursing the traffic and stuck ups and these and traffic jams and all these things and before you know it the third wave comes no what do you do the other factor also that i want you to keep in mind is lockdown is lifted vaccines start getting more and more popular more and more of the population starts getting vaccinated and there is no third wave but the fear does not go away months after things come under control somebody says vaccine is killing people there was this person who got vaccinated and in 24 hours he died finished all our joys all our bouncing back everything is gone and we land up in a situation where again we get locked in not by authorities but by our own self Now, that is what i am here today to tell you please do not allow that to happen today start thinking of the worst case scenario so what if a third wave comes so what if the lockdown is extended so what if some of my near and dear including myself if i still not got it so what if i get uh, covid it's part of life it's like you are moving around in a congested city traffic and an accident takes place you come to see in the media or somewhere that an accident took place and so many people died and one bus hit uh, something and so many people crashed and there was a fire and all that happens sen value sensational value and before you know it it passes off but this time that is not happening this time people are getting stuck people are not able to move beyond many people are not bouncing back but i can tell you by the extensive first person accounts that we have taken from people we are going to be putting that up also on the social media one by one one by one you those of you who are connected to banjara through social media you will be getting these first person accounts of people who are there who are telling that hey i am 32 years old i am 49 years old i am 61 years old and we need to you know work on that bhavna says maybe there is no bounce back this time it may be a need to step up step by step you know in the uh, alcoholism language and all that they say when a person is becoming an alcoholic and becoming addicted it's like he is going deeper and deeper and deeper into the water he is drowning but you know what they say if this person tries to splash and tries to come up he actually goes deeper down he doesn't succeed till he hits rock bottom when he hits rock bottom when he hits the you know bottom surface of the ground there and he gives a kick he automatically starts going up so they say sometimes you have to hit rock bottom and then and then only you start moving up and how do you hit the rock bottom as i told you say so what worst case scenario yes it is likely to happen it's not a question of why me it is going to happen to me i will get covid somebody whom i love dearly is going to get covid somebody whom i care for is going to pass away from this world every one of us is going to pass away it's only a question of time there have been 102 year old people who got covid and they have bounced back and they are leading a normal life they are very young fit and fine people who got covid and in 24 hours they were no more it's exactly like that it's like accidents it's like so many things that uh, um, happen do we accept that so with that while i have been uh, seeing a lot of nice pleasant positive uh, entries in the chat box i have not come so far into the questions i would like you to now please post your questions your comments and your doubts 
as usual i'll just take a one minute break stretch out and i'll be back with you Hey everyone. So um, today we are going to inaugurate our uh, CCAD program, and uh, we have invited all our students who have enrolled for uh, this program. And uh, anybody else, you know, any uh, of you, if you think uh, that you want to uh, help out children, see, uh, like we are a counselling centre, and we come across so many phone calls where parents are asking us. Uh, you know, as to what to do in these situations when children are not stepping out. You know, their emotional and their social uh, development is getting hampered. They seem to be getting irritated, uh, stressed out. You know, they are arguing back, becoming aggressive. How do we handle children like that? So we thought this particular program, and purposely we have timed it. now because this is the time when a lot of help is required uh, by uh, you know adults to guide their children right as parents and also a lot of teachers are calling and saying that you know this uh, holidays have started and you know we want to we are seeing that you know last one year everybody was online and we can feel that you know children are getting so stressed it's so annoying to all the time sit in front of uh, an online mode so how can we reach out what can we do differently you know we want to make use of this vacation time to reach out to children so uh, because of all these reasons we thought you know this time in this particular ccad program we we'll bring in those elements where you know uh, at this current situation where children are all locked up at home you know how to reach out to them how to make sure that uh, holistic development takes place and a lot of things to introspect uh, about a lot of activities that that we can make uh, children do you know and when i say children i'm talking about 0 to 18 years so today afternoon from uh, 2 o'clock 2 to 3 we are going to have the inaugural if any of you would like to join us to just understand what this program is going to be about what will be covered you are most welcome uh, the whatsapp number is uh, given here please sir uh, send us a whatsapp message we'll give you the link and uh, you know continue to uh, please uh, reach out to us even our on the website our uh, counselors uh, numbers are given so if you are stressed out you don't know how to handle the situation at home because you know everybody is in this uh, particular uh, lockdown situation then please reach out to our counselors also counseling is also absolutely free so whatever in our way uh, from banjara we are uh, trying to reach out uh, you know during these uh, tiring times so uh, most welcome uh, to today's uh, afternoon session also and if you think anybody else can benefit any teacher any uh, you know coach any parent anybody can benefit please let them know uh, we are uh, you know this is open to all and we'll welcome for the, uh, today's inaugural session so hi hand you back to ali was that person was in my life it is up to us to say that despite the fact that somebody has passed away the pain is very very bad yet the fact remains that i had that person in my life and that person's memories can help me to bounce back as long as you are alive life has to go on even if it is one day at a 
time. I keep quoting that 100 year old gentleman who when people ask how can you remain so positive at this age and when you are so tired and then you are so sickly and all that. He says every morning I open the newspaper and I read the obituary column and if I find that my photo is not there, I know that I've got one more day to live and I decide to make the best of that uh, uh, day. Uh, how did people who recover manage fear? You see, that's the beauty of it, that people have, uh, you know, who have uh, recovered, they are the ones who have managed to overcome the fear because they said, oh, is this all that was there about it? I was mortally, you know, afraid. I was so scared what is going to happen to me. But I got COVID and I have recovered. Here I am standing fit and fine. Okay, maybe with some cough or whatever after effects. But that is there in anything. Even if you just recall two years back, we used to have these cough viruses, which used to last for weeks and months. They just would refuse to go away. Eventually they did, isn't it? All viruses go away. No virus remains with you for the rest of your uh, uh, life. As counselors, what is the best way to talk to children about the current COVID situation? How can we put their anxiety to rest? Make them talk. You don't talk to children about it. Ask them what their anxiety is. It is so sad when I see children, you know, going around asking daddy or mommy, Daddy, smell this and tell me. Why? I want to see whether you lost your sense of smell and whether you got COVID. Daddy, don't go out. There is Corona outside. I've heard such heartbreaking stories of a toddler going and catching the leg of father who was going out, saying, Daddy, Daddy, don't go. Corona will catch you outside. So we need to make them talk and tell them that Corona is not a monster standing outside. Sense of smell is not an ultimate decision maker or an indicator. Sometimes even when we have a cold, we lose our sense of smell. Doesn't matter. It comes back. Once you make children talk, you encourage them to come out with their deepest fears and anxieties. Then you deal with it specifically with what that child is going through. Do not Generalize on that. Ha, Navin Kumarji, all the way from Bede in Maharashtra, is with us. I always welcome him. He says we have to come out and face any pandemic or any calamity mentally so that physically we can cope with it. That's right. What Mr. Navneet is saying is 100% true. Your mind controls the body. No? So first you control your mind. If your mind is in your control, your body can come under your uh, control. There's no doubt about uh, that. Vani says, COVID infection catches body and then there is a possibility of recovering. But when it catches mind, then it's difficult to recover. So keeping mind healthy is important. Just sharing this was in a talk by a spiritual guru. Yes, we have so many wonderful gurus who are talk sense, who talk at a practical level who motivate you, encourage you, help you to understand and look at the bigger picture of uh, uh, life. And that is what you need to do. Do not allow the virus to catch your mind. Kanaka says, uh, people want everything to get over fast. Take my medicines and instantly you should be fine. It takes time and how are you managing yourself during that time plays a very important aspect. That's why I keep on telling people, particularly during this COVID situation, connect to nature. Somebody was asking, how do you explain to children? Make your child grow a plant, even one single plant in the balcony. You put the seed and you say, however much water you put in it, you have to wait till the seed sprouts and comes out. Keep looking at it every day. One fine day, the sprout will come out. You will learn that is how nature is. Delayed gratification. When that thing comes out, sometimes it starts withering. Sometimes some insect comes on it. Sometimes some you know, pesticide has to be used or something of that sort. It's part of life. And then the plant again goes ahead. 
Means that says very true about the fear factor. One of my close friend in Delhi and her whole family had tested positive, but I just gave her some strength and just ask her daily what itself made her feel good. And today her whole family is doing fine. We just have to be with them and it works like magic. 100% right, Vedita. Each one of us should take up this lesson. One family, one friend, whoever you can reach out uh, to. Rajni says most of the time parents keep talking about COVID all the time. Yes, Rajni, this is one thing which I want everybody to be cautioned about. TV is switched on most of the time. By this, they are passing their fears to the kids. Being positive at home helps kids. Be. There's no doubt about it. This is not rocket science. Everybody knows this. Nikar says, grieving over loss is a journey. Can't force come off it. Yes. In fact, Nikar, that's one of the things that I always say that we have this wonderful grieving process brought to us by Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, which I have been working on for a number of years. I have modified it to change Indian circumstances because the way we grieve is a little different from the way the Westerners uh, do it. And I have expanded it, elaborated, added more steps to it. And I keep telling people that if there is a loss, a major loss, like a death, please try and go through as many steps of the grieving process. Don't run away from it. That is why our age old rituals of the good old days used to help a person to bounce back after the worst of you know, losses due to death and things of that sort. Today, we don't have those elaborate rituals. But there are ways and means of doing it. If anybody has had a major bereavement and wants to interact with me personally and find out how that grieving process can be got through, please get in touch. I'll be more than willing to help you out with that. Anna says, over time, COVID will surely go. If not today, it shall go tomorrow. The fear will remain for ages in memory, which will be passed on to those who are not even born now. This fear will last decades to come. But we can do something about it, Nainas. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were bombed. Atom bomb. Cities were destroyed. Innumerable people fell sick. And the sicknesses, the after effects of the nuclear bomb lasted not for years, but for decades. But check with the Japanese. They did bounce back. In fact, they bounced back so well that in about 20, 30 years, they, become, they became leaders in technology and advancement and manufacturing and scientific advancement. So many things that they did. That is evidence. That is proof to show that just because you have gone through something, you need not sit and grieving for years and decades. You need not pass it down to your younger uh, generation. There are ways and means of doing uh, it. Yes, Nikat has given it a very nice uh, uh, name, post-traumatic growth. That is another thing, you know, sometimes you can use it as they say, you know, that failures are stepping stones to success. The same thing applies over here. A major setback, a tragedy, a loss, a very fearful phase when you went through the worst of anxieties and pain and all that can actually stimulate uh, growth. That is what very few people do not understand. It is entirely in your hands and it is up to you how you would like to achieve uh, that. We keep talking about it. But the sad part is that many of us do not implement it. Shubha says, recovering COVID, yes, the mental trauma was worse than COVID itself. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Thanks for highlighting that, Shubha. In fact, I strongly suspect that some people, like those rabbits, I gave the example of actually have died of heart attack or failure of organs not connected to the virus. As I said, I'm not a doctor. I have no right to make such claims. 
but this is my instinctive and gut feeling as a person who continuously studies human behavior. And that is why, again, like Vinita said, you have one person, that family was in Delhi, Vinita was in Bangalore, but daily checking up, daily giving them that little boost was all that they needed. And all of them today, as Vinita says happily, have recovered. Right. Yes, Anna says simple motivational talk did go a long uh, uh, way in COVID because. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, my uncle was recovering well, whereas my aunt, who was admitted in the same room, wasn't recovering. And that would develop more fear in her. So I had to tell her that it's also her underlying and other illnesses that is slowing it. So don't stress over after which she realized recovery for each person is different. After which she started recovering well, simple motivational talk did help there. It always does, Ainas and others. It always uh, does. I'll also give you a reverse uh, situation where there was this couple. The husband was quite old. He had a lot of comorbidities. In fact, he had recovered from a very deep illness where they had already given up hope that he will uh, survive and then he got covid and he passed away his wife apparently three years back was told that you will die at 65 years of age unless you come back to me that astrologer said i will have to do some prayers and this and that and help you with that if you don't do that in three years from now when you are 65 you will die was what she was told. She laughed at it and she didn't give any attention. She didn't go back to that astrologer. When this COVID came and when her husband, who was 12 years older than her, and as I said, suffering from chronic disease and all that, when he passed away, she suddenly realized that I am 65. And can you believe it? Within 48 hours, she passed away. Even doctors said there was no reason she was fit and fine. There's no reason for her to die. These are the type of things which make me sit up and think about this importance. Shirin says, can we coin a phrase like, avoid it like the plague. After Corona, we can say, avoid it like the Corona. Yes, we can say that. But you look at the flip side of it, uh, Shirin. The, I am told that uh, you know there are people who are praying to the goddess Coronamma. They have made Corona into an Amma and into a Goddess. And all the time they give the female form only. They didn't say Corona Appa. They are only saying Corona Amma for whatever the uh, reason. Surika is asking what kind of affirmations help to overcome negative self-talk. Firstly, whenever you are getting this negative self-talk, no? start this process of what we call as thought stopping. Every now and uh, uh, then, what you do is to tell your mind, okay, these negative thoughts are coming. Let me just wallow in those negative thoughts. I'll stop all other activity and I will allow those thoughts to come. Oh, what happens if someone will die? What happens if I die? What happens if it becomes painful? What happens if I become an invalid? All those things, let those thoughts come. At one point, tell yourself, stop. Enough is enough. Now, the next time I'm going to allow these thoughts to come is after four hours or eight hours or whatever, set a time. And now start thinking of the positives. Yes, my dear friend so-and-so got COVID and she has recovered fully. So-and-so has got this and they are fit and uh, fine. I have so many elderly relatives who are got comorbidities, but still they have not got COVID. They are still fit and fine and they are leading a normal life. Start giving concrete positive thoughts. Dharma says, I think there is a need to applaud every recovery just to make all of us know that there are more recoveries than that. There are 100 times more recoveries than that. 99% of the people are uh, you know, re recovering. Dharma. That is what we are not understanding. And that's why I said I'm taking these first person accounts and we are going to be sharing it with all of uh, you. Shuba says, the thing that pushed me through was the faith in prayers and friends and acquaintances who connected and showed that they cared. Take an example from what Shubha is telling you. 
that's all that we need mani says yesterday in karna paper there was a touching letter that i read by induji jain how she overcame fear of death so that till the end she was able to be calm be happy like a child she had curiosity and what there is yes if you have read times of india yesterday it reproduced an article which she had written about what is to be done when she dies she had written in that that do not mourn my death celebrate my passing away it is a wonderful article which she had written quite some time back and kept it and finally when she did die times of india published it and i am very thankful to her for having left that as a legacy behind her uh, as yes what is the next uh, no we still have 8 minutes to go do i have any more questions or do i have some nice interesting uh, comments kanmani says yes i am here bhavna bye only to bhavna kanmani we are we are all welcoming you to and good to see you fit and fine and bounced back and all your family bounced back and kanmani's daughter is doing exemplary work she is a surgeon who has been continuously working with covid patients for the last 14 months now and hats off to all these people not only to somebody like dr swati who is the surgeon but also to the mother for the mother to have that large heartedness to send a young daughter the only child to say go and do your duty most of us are getting caught in that trap of don't go out don't let any family member go out protect yourself stay indoors locked up but if all these doctors like dr swati also follow the same thing what is going to happen to the people who actually acquire covid that is what takes a bigger heart for a mother to tell her only child yes go out there and do that uh, uh, thing shubha says kanmani has such an old daughter no she doesn't have an old daughter she's got a very young and dynamic and very lively and charming uh, daughter ah swati is there with us i didn't know that she says thank you uncle covid is allowing me to listen to your talk finally yes she was so busy that she just wouldn't have time to do anything she was perpetually on round the clock duty she would be visiting her parents only once in a while so because she got covid she had to take a break she had no choice but to sit at home and uh, relax and i'm sure she caught up with all the movies and whatever else uh, has to be uh, done so that's what i'm saying these are all small small you know blessings in disguise as we say every cloud has a silver lining everything is a process of learning and moving on and getting to look at life in a different uh, way there are so many people whom i know who used to be all the time working workaholics upwardly mobile chasing the rainbow deep into the rat race and then they would have a heart attack and suddenly their whole attitude towards life would change why do you want to wait till a heart attack comes or a covid comes or something of that uh, sort ah this is a wonderful compliment shubha says kanmani looks uh, like she is in her 20s i think she is in her 20s only but she also has a daughter who is in her uh, 20s it's okay doesn't matter but this is what life is all about ha ah, sreka is asking how can we detach from this collective madness you you said a very nice statement uh, uh, sreka collective why should we be part of that collective it takes courage to swim against the tide you know that wonderful song of three idiots behti hawa sa tha wo just listen to a few words how you know they say that this man used to swim upstream he used to always create his own path where there is no path these are the type of things which we should learn whether there is covid or not we should learn that you have to swim against the tide you have to create your own path you have to 
the battle, the obstacles and hurdles that will come when you take up a new uh, path. Every time you have to keep working on the, that. It is not to do with just the COVID situation. It has to go. But when COVID goes, some other amma will come. Corona amma will be out and there will be another amma coming uh, in. Or there may be some appa coming in to try to make life miserable uh, uh, for uh, uh, you. <laughs> yes, Bhavna, that's a very nice quote. They say only dead fish goes with the uh, tide. And we are definitely not going to be dead fish, right? We are very much alive. Some of us who are non-vegetarians can pick up that dead fish and uh, eat it and enjoy a meal. Those of us who are uh, uh, vegetarians can enjoy the river, put your legs into it, swim against the uh, tide, move on to enjoying face that you know, onslaught of the uh, waters. I learned that uh, you know two years back when this great flood had uh, come, you know, in Kurg and all these places. We were uh, at that Tibetan uh, settlement, and when these massive rains came and buses were stopped and highways were closing down, we finished our programs so, and training over there, and we were driving back. On the way back, we stopped at KRS Dam, and we could see the torrent of water that was flowing. We were inches away standing there and watching, literally hypnotized. We felt so small in front of that huge deluge of water, which if I had just taken one step forward into that water, I would be five miles away. That is was the speed and volume of the water. It made me realize how insignificant we are in the major aspects of uh, life and things that happen around us. I just recorded that in my memory and I said that, see, this is what nature can do to us if we are not careful. They were even getting scared that the whole dam may crack because of the pressure of the water. Thankfully, it did not happen. But we were coming very close to that. Nature was teaching us a lesson. And we have still not learned those lessons. We still have floods. We still have people getting washed away and houses getting washed away by floods and things of that sort. Not because nature is against us, because we are ill-treating nature. The same way, looking at the bigger picture, I feel all these coronas and this and that are also, if not directly, at least indirectly, because we are not giving nature a chance. We are believing that we are so strong. We are so omnipotent that we can control everything in this world. Whereas human beings are very tiny, and very puny creatures compared to the whole world. We live in a false sense of being the superior race and all these type of uh, unwanted, overconfident thoughts. We have to learn to live in harmony. Corona Amma is giving us one more lesson that please understand that life is not entirely in your control. As the proverb says, do not be so busy making a living that you forget how to live. That is what we need to work on. That is what we need to understand. It's been a pleasure spending this hour with you all. I look forward every Saturday to spend this time with you, particularly because of the interesting thought provoking and stimulating questions and comments that I get in the second half. I really look forward to those. Please be with us next uh, Saturday again and uh, as many Saturdays as possible and all other ways and programs. If anybody wants to reach out, as I mentioned, we are there for you. We provide free counseling to anybody and everybody in whatever way. You can email us. You can call us. Once the lockdown is lifted, you're welcome to come and visit uh, uh, us. There are so many ways in which we can be connected, which is what some of you said, that being connected as human beings is something which is amazing and which is something that we need to do. Have a wonderful weekend. See you. Bye-bye.